Some people think that evolution has nothing to do with an individual's philosophical outlook. But atheism needs evolution, this week on Creation Magazine Live. Welcome to Creation Magazine Live. My name is Richard Fangrad. And I'm Calvin Smith. Our topic this week is atheism needs evolution. Mm -hmm. uh, the question of origins, uh, where did everything come from, only has two possible answers. Either the universe arose by itself or it didn't. And if it did, then some sort of cosmic evolution must have taken place in order to count to, to, uh, to, to explain reality. If it didn't, then there must be some sort of creator, but there's no third option. Right. Many people seem convinced that the theory of evolution is based on an analysis of brute facts that clearly proves evolution. Right. And uh, that's been a real process throughout history. And as arch uh, evolutionist Richard Dawkins said, you've got millions and millions of pieces of evidence which no reasonable person can possibly dispute. However, every person has an ultimate starting point of belief about the question of origins, a, a presupposition that's simply accepted as true without any proof, or as an axiom, that's what axioms are. Right. Even if someone says that their, uh, their ultimate starting belief is a result of the analysis of a collection of facts that lead them to the ultimate starting position, it remains that at the root of their belief system, they will always have a starting point that can't be supported further. Right. Um, evolutionist uh, Michael Roos admitted as much when, when he stated this. He said, evolution is akin to religion. It involves making certain a priori or metaphysical assumptions, which at some level cannot be proven empirically. Right. So as an abstract example, if someone says, well, I believe A, and someone else asks, well, why? And the responder says, well, because of B. They can't keep doing this forever, right? It's infinite regress. Right. Yeah, you can run the full length of the alphabet, so to speak, because of C, because of D, et cetera. But sooner or later, you're going to have to stop and say, I believe it because I believe it. Right. Uh, you, you'll ultimately arrive at a place where you can't justify that belief with any other belief. Otherwise, that other belief becomes the ultimate belief. Right. Uh, that's just how it works. Now, once someone has adopted a specific starting point, all other data will usually be processed through that filter, right. providing them with their worldview. So for the atheist, the starting point uh, is an active belief in the proposition, there is no God. Right. That's atheos from, from the Greek, right. uh, despite some uh, revisionism claiming that uh, it's merely the absence of belief in God. Everyone has beliefs. Uh, that govern their behavior. Everyone has those beliefs and, and, and the outworking of those beliefs is, is results in your behavior. If someone starts with that premise, what would their explanation be for what we observe? The universe, the earth, the diversity of life, the human experience, etc. What, what would they explain the existence of those facts with? How would they do that? Right. Well, one, you're going to accept naturalism. Uh, right. Obviously, you'd have to believe that everything has arisen through a naturalistic process, right? Because the ultimate assumption is that there's no mind, no intelligent designer, or guiding hand to account for existence. Right. Yeah. And two, uh, you have to believe in simple to complex. Believing that our universe, with such vast complexity, could come into being fully formed, it j just isn't viable. Therefore, there would have to have been some sort of uh, and there presumably are, innumerable changes taking place in matter over time. The processes involved must have caused matter to go from simple to more complex. Yeah, that's one of the core beliefs. Right. Uh, third, you'd have to believe in deep time. In order to account for the vast diversity of things in our universe, all of these processes must have happened over an immense amount of deep time. Right. Uh, number four, humans are autonomous accidents. Uh, human beings must have come about via natural, unguided processes, so we are therefore not special in any sense other than we're at the top of the food chain, basically. 
Uh, any sense of morality or ethics is just part of our naturalistic development and therefore not absolute in any way. Right, and of course number five is evolution. Right. The ultimate yeah. conclusion is that everything we experience is a result of a process that might be coined uh, self-creation. Uh, yeah. Notice that even though uh, self-creation in its truest sense is kind of an incoherent idea, because something can't do anything before it exists. <laughs> but anyway, uh, new atheists like Lawrence Krauss actually propose uh, this kind of scientific nonsense. But anyway, we'll be back. If someone decided to make a cake to celebrate the Earth's birthday, how many candles should they put on it? Some people would contend that you'd need 4.5 billion because they say the Earth is that old. However, many are surprised to learn that this figure did not come from dating Earth rocks, but rocks from outer space. A famous study published in 1956 dated a group of meteorites at 4.5 billion years, and they assumed that this was the age of the Earth. Like all radioactive dating studies, these results depended on a number of questionable assumptions. But unlike dating Earth rocks, this study also relied on the speculation that meteorites are leftover junk from Earth's formation. Contemporary geologist Arthur Holmes remarked that this approach was unsound in principle. But for ideas to become firmly entrenched, it doesn't necessarily require solid data. It just needs sufficient repetition. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. If you just tuned in today, we're talking about atheism needs evolution. It does, believe it or not. Well, we just walked through the logical results of belief about the universe, if there's no God, and found that all of the core elements of the grand theory of evolution, uh, uh, cosmological, geological, chemical, biological, and, and human evolution, are simply a logical, philosophical outworking of the basic concept of, of classical atheism, applied to the world that we see, applied to the world that we live in. Yeah, all of these conclusions could be derived from a simple general belief that God does not exist, atheism, uh, prior to influence from specific physical evidences whatsoever. From that point forward, every fact you see could be interpreted according to that view. And right. these, of course, would then be correlated to create some kind of history uh, about the universe that supports those beliefs. Right. Yeah, well, we were just talking about starting axioms, and these are ultimate starting axioms. These ultimate starting axioms of creation or evolution have been the same throughout history. The idea of evolution is not a modern concept. The ancient Egyptians, the Babylonians, the, the Hindus, the Greeks, the Romans, they all had ideas about millions of years and or some form of biological evolution in, in various forms, not Darwinian evolution. Right. In, in their beliefs long ago, all without access to the facts commonly held up today as proof of evolution. Like from the geologic column, DNA, natural selection, radioisotope dating, hominid fossils, and, and things like that. Yeah, as a more modern example, Charles Darwin's uh, atheistic grandfather, Erasmus Darwin, he conceived and published a naturalistic expl explanation of the world in his book, Zenomia. Yeah. And that was actually yeah. published in 1794. That was some 65 years before Charles Darwin did. So these included the idea that the Earth was formed from a cosmic explosion, life began in the sea, right. that uh, things became progressively more complex and eventually became people. And of course, all this happened over millions and millions of years of history. So again, notice that uh, all of these assumptions were concluded without the common evidences that people point to, evolutionists point to today. Right, yeah, evolution's been around for a long time. Right. Uh, so why would anyone start with the concept of atheism? Um, the, the, the Bible says, of course, that unregenerate people are in active rebellion against God. The ultimate rejection of any person would be to deny their existence, right? right. It's, it's like saying, you're dead to me. That's, the, that's, that's a huge insult, right? You're, you're dead to me. Ultimately, some people reject God to the point that they deny his existence. The, the denial of God is, is often epitomized by the, the famous statement, God is dead, made by, by, by Nietzsche uh, years ago. Right. Although some people throughout history have declared themselves atheists, the concept has always been deemed questionable, presumably because of the scientific and philosophical uh, illogicality and the obvious moral indications of that system. Uh, for example, Sir Isaac Newton, uh, undoubtedly the greatest scientist who ever lived, yep. uh, said this, 
Opposition to godliness is atheism in profession and idolatry in practice. Atheism is so senseless and odious to mankind that it has never had many professors. <laughs> That's a great quote. That is you a know, great quote. And he's still hailed as the greatest scientist who ever lived today. Right. Uh, some have the wrong impression that evolution is, it, it, it's, itself is scientific. But it wasn't just scientists that immediately embraced Charles Darwin's theory of evolution. Rather, it was those, whether scientific-minded or not, that were naturalists mm -hmm. and Bible skeptics that supported Darwin initially. Uh, opposition to Darwinism came immediately from the likes of brilliant scientists, and these include, and you might know some of these names, physicist James Clerk Maxwell, founder of uh, electromagnetism, for example. Louis Pasteur, that's a name you're familiar with, pioneer of, of immunization and the developer of the fundamental law of, bio, of biology, biogenesis. Uh, Lord Kelvin, pioneer of thermodynamics and the transatlantic telegraph. And Louis Agassiz, founder of modern glacial geology. They all, here's scientists that all rejected Darwin. Yes, famous mathematician, astronomer, and uh, fellow of the Royal Society, Sir John Herschel, dismissed it as the law of higgledy-piggledy. <laughs> Richard Owen, the superintendent of the Natural History Department of the British Museum, so irked Darwin with his objections that, uh, to, to his theory that Darwin eventually admitted he hated him. Uh, William, William we uh, Wewell, a uh, renowned philosopher of science, uh, author of the History of Inductive science, uh, Sciences, banned origin from the Cambridge Library. They thought this was such nonsense, the idea that complexity like this could somehow come together by purely naturalistic processes. They just declared this is non-science or right. nonsense. Yeah. And there was a slew of, of what they call scriptural geologists that also rejected Darwinism and its accompanying millions of years of Earth history. And we'll get into more of this when we get back. Creation.com is the world's most powerful internet resource for finding answers to questions about the origins debate. It includes an online store where you can browse through hundreds of the world's leading creationist books, DVDs and related materials. Scientists and researchers from around the world have contributed more than 8,000 articles, many of which have appeared in leading creationist publications over more than 30 years. Creation or evolution? When the results are in, which one is supported by scientific observations? Find out at Creation.com. On this week's episode, we're talking about how atheism needs evolution. That's our topic this week. Now, we're, we're continuing on this list of, of scientists that initially, when they saw Darwinism, just thought it was totally <laughs> unscientific. Um, Professor uh, Johann H. Blasius, director of the Ducal Natural History Museum of Brunswick, Germany, in an interview said... I have also seldom read a scientific book which makes, makes such wide-ranging conclusions with so few facts supporting them. Darwin wants to show that kinds come from other kinds. Yeah. On, on the other hand, it was self-described free-thinking individuals such as Charles Lyell, who wanted to free science mm. from Moses, and agnostic Thomas Huxley, the, in, including the notorious faker uh, Ernst Haeckel, mm -hmm. who, uh, who already had deep-seated anti-biblical ideas regarding origins and, and hated the Bible's opposition to racism, uh, who eagerly supported Darwin's book. Uh, even the initial adopters coming from a theological perspective like theistic evolutionist Asa Gray and racist theologian Charles Kingsley seemed predisposed to naturalistic explanations for the creation prior to accepting Darwinism. Right. From the beginning of the scientifically fruitful Middle Ages to about uh, 200 years ago, the Western world's primary worldview was overly, uh, overtly based on Christianity and right. the biblical yeah. narrative and concepts and law and morality that sprung from it. Today it's very different. Uh, with Christianity and the Bible nearly thrown out of the public life altogether, yep. uh, teaching from the Bible and even promoting biblical morality, it's, it's literally outlawed in many um, places. And only one view of origins, uh, evolution, is taught in the majority of state schools now. That's right. So it's easy to see why many people believe in the theory of evolution today, because state-run school systems and the media throughout the Western world teach it as fact and science to impressionable kids everywhere and impressionable adults as well. Uh, so, much of, so, so now, much of that evolutionary teaching is a self-perpetuating concept be, because evolutionary ideas support a naturalistic worldview rather than a theistic worldview. This means that many, uh, even ones that grew up in, in a home that professed belief in God, conclude atheism 
is true and adopt that as their starting point. Right, they get converted, right? Yeah. However, evolution does not fall out of the facts. We looked at that already. People would do well to, to re-examine the, the, the starting position of, of, of atheism. The evidence right. used to support it via evolution simply doesn't stack up. Starting with a biblical view, what we see in God's world matches what we see in his word with the little need for these fudge factors, which are so common in the, in the evolutionary They're explanation all over the place, yeah. of, of origins. Um, well, let's, let's look at this another way now. We were talking about how people have starting axioms that they, they base their view of origins on, and people can choose to change their starting axiom if they wish, and many people will do so because they say that the evidence uh, drove them to do so. But others have come to evolutionary conclusions before they looked at the evidence. Right. And some even admit that they had motivations for doing so. And uh, he, here are a few. Uh, old Earth promoter James Hutton, before he'd examined the evidence, declared this. The past history of our globe must be explained by what we, uh, we see be seen happening now. No powers are to be employed that are not natural to the globe. No action to be admitted except those of which we know the principle. Well, how did he know that? Right. <laughs> he just declared yeah. that. He just, that's a statement. That's his axiom. That's what he started with. Exactly. And then he reinterpreted geology. Exactly. Uh, Atlas Huxley, the, the, uh, the British novelist who wrote Brave New World in 1932, was the grandson of, uh, of Darwin's bulldog, T.H. Huxley, uh, made this frank admission about his anti-Christian motivation. He said this, I have motive for not wanting the world to have a meaning. Consequently, assumed that it had none and was able without any difficulty to find satisfying reasons for this assumption. That's an interesting statement. The philosopher who finds no meaning in the world is not concerned exclusively with the problem in pure metaphysics. He is also concerned to prove that there is no valid reason why he personally should not do as he wants to do or why his friends should not seize political power and govern in the way that they find most advantageous to themselves. For myself, the philosophy of meaninglessness was essentially an instrument of liberation, sexual and political. Interesting. Right. So we can definitely see a, a, a motive behind this atheism, and we'll get into more of this when we get back. Did you know that the Earth's magnetic field has reversed direction or flipped multiple times in the past? The evidence for these reversals is rock solid because when molten rock cools, certain mineral grains align with the Earth's magnetic field, thus recording the direction of the Earth's magnetic field at the time in the solidified rock. Previously, most geologists thought that a single reversal would take many thousands of years. However, creation physicist Dr. Russell Humphreys reasoned they must have happened quickly to fit within the biblical time scale. So Dr. Humphreys made a prediction that quickly cooling thin lava flows would be found that recorded fast changes in the direction of the magnetic field. This prediction was later proven correct. Scientists were shocked to find major magnetic field changes had occurred within weeks in a single lava flow. They published this in the regular scientific literature. Thus, yet another scientific prediction based on biblical history proved to be correct. To find out more from Creation Ministries International, visit our website, creation.com. So our subject today is uh, atheism needs evolution. That's right. Now, now Isaac Asimov, the famous author of the sci-fi series The Foundation, iRobot, he confessed his atheistic faith when he said this, I have faith and belief, uh, and belief myself. I believe that the universe is comprehensible within the bounds of natural law and that the human brain can discover those natural laws and comprehend the universe. I believe that nothing beyond those natural laws is needed. I have no evidence for this. It's simply what I have faith in and what I believe. All right. Those, yeah. are, those are his axioms. Yep. Uh, Self-professed atheist Thomas Nagel, professor of philosophy at New York University, said this. I want atheism to be true, and I'm made uneasy by the fact that some of the most intelligent and well-informed people I know are religious believers. It isn't just that I don't want, that I don't believe in God and naturally hope that there is no God. I don't want there to be a God. I don't want the universe to be like that. Right. Wow. And, and, and finally, uh, Richard Lewontin, a uh, Marxist and social commentator, uh, summed up his motivations and preconceptions perfectly when he wrote the following. Our willingness to accept scientific claims that are against common sense 
is the key to an understanding of the real struggle between science and the supernatural. We take the side of science in spite of the patently, uh, patent absurdity of some of its constructs, in spite of its failure to fulfill many of its extravagant promises of health and life, in spite of the tolerance of the scientific community for unsubstantiated just so stories, because we have a prior commitment, a commitment to materialism. It is not that the methods and institutions of science somehow compel us to accept a material explanation of the phenomenal world, but on the contrary, that we are forced by an a priori adherence to material causes to create an apparatus of investigation and a set of concepts that produce material explanations, no matter how counterintuitive, no matter how mystifying to the uninitiated. Moreover, that materialism is absolute, for we cannot allow a divine foot in the door. Uh, the eminent uh, Kant scholar Louis Beck used to say that anyone uh, who could believe in God could believe in anything. To uh, appeal to an omnipotent deity is to allow that at any moment the regularities of nature may be ruptured, that miracles may happen. Amazing. Can you <laughs> yeah. see the, the axioms there? Right? Exactly. The bias, the starting point. Absolutely. So we, we can see that many atheists are very open about admitting that their philosophy of life yep. determines how they will view facts. They will build a framework in which they evaluate facts to produce evidence for an atheistic worldview, not consider any evidence to the contrary. Exactly. Yep. Let, let's look a little more uh, deeply into this motivation with a few more quotes. Here's what Michael Roos once again uh, said. Uh, Evolution is promoted by its practitioners as more than mere science. Evolution is promulgated as an ideology a secular religion, a full-fledged alternative to Christianity with meaning and morality. I'm an ardent evolutionist and an ex-Christian, but I must admit that in this one complaint, and Mr. Gish is but one of many to make about it, uh, Gish obviously being a, a famous creationist, uh, the literalists are absolutely right. Evolution is a religion. This was true of evolution in the beginning, and it is true of evolution today. Evolution, therefore, came into being as a kind of secular ideology an explicit substitute for Christianity. Incredible, isn't it? Open admission. Wow. Yep. And, and there, have been, there have been people in history that govern how the world thinks today, how you think, mm -hmm. how we think to some extent. And we, we've been carrying this book for many, many years. Seven men who rule the world from the grave. Their philosophies, their ideas continue to shape people's thinking today. People mm -hmm. like Charles Darwin, Karl Marx, Sigmund Freud, yep. John Dewey, you, you <laughs> might know some of these words, Kierkegaard, uh, uh, John Maynard Keyes. They're still influencing schools, businesses, churches yep. uh, around us. Uh, learn how to avoid the traps that countless people have fallen into right. when they uncritically accept these ideas of these seven men. These unbiblical can, ideas. Unbiblical ideas. You can get this book at 30% off when you, when you go, go to creation.com, order it online, use the coupon code CML7M, Creation Magazine Live, Seven Men Who Rule the World from the Grave. 30% off for, for Creation Magazine Live viewers only. This is just a special promotion for our viewers here. And we'll have more about this topic in just a minute. With all the responsibilities that most pastors have, it is often too much to ask them to keep up with all the latest science that supports the Bible and creation. The Information Department at CMI reviews the leading evolutionary science publications so that our scientists and speakers are both constantly updated with the latest evolutionist information and able to refute it. Give your pastor a break. Book a CMI speaker into your church for a faith-strengthening Sunday morning message. Visit creation.com to contact your nearest CMI office. So our subject today is Atheism Needs Evolution. Right. So what is the main bone of contention for atheists? We can see the underlying problem is authority. In this candid quote from Thomas Nagel, uh, you'll see that very plainly here. My guess is that this cosmic authority problem <laughs> is not a rare condition and that it is responsible for much of the scientism and reductionism of our time. One of the tendencies it supports is the ludicrous overuse of evolutionary biology to explain everything about human life, including everything about the human mind. <laughs> It's a revealing quote there. It's about authority. Yeah. Yes, this debate is clearly about which authority you're going to adhere to. Does God right. and his word have authority in our lives? Or, or do we think we should have ultimate authority, right? This next quote here 
typifies the answer for most atheists. We no longer feel ourselves to be guests in someone else's home and therefore obliged to make our behavior conform with a set of pre-existing cosmic rules. It's our creation now. We make the rules. We establish the parameters of reality. We create the world. And because we do, we no longer have to justify our behavior for we are, we are now the architects of the universe. We are responsible to nothing outside of ourselves where we are the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Wow, well, that's blasphemous. Uh, but it's interesting to see how Rifkin uses biblical terminology here, yes. isn't it? It's like he's emphasizing his belief that, that now humanity has ultimate authority over God. And mm -hmm. why? Because of science, or so-called science, has disproved the Bible. It's, it's, it's not really science, because science, uh, science, it, it, science is just a, a, an atheist code word for evolution. <laughs> that is what there is, the way he's using it there. Yeah. But, but this should be a wake-up call to Christians, should right? Yeah. That have yeah. accepted evolutionary ideas. The, the concept of evolution is absolutely foreign to the Bible. It's actually anti-Bible, and it's anti-God. Right. It's an idea that's integral to an atheistic worldview, and that attacks the roots of the Christian faith because it destroys the reason for the gospel. And, and atheists know this. Look at Richard Bozar's comment from, from Amer American Atheist magazine. Christianity has fought still fights and will continue to fight science to the desperate end over evolution because evolution destroys utterly and finally the very reason Jesus' earthly life was supposedly made necessary. Destroy Adam and Eve and the original sin and in the rubble you will find the sorry remains of the Son of God. If Jesus was not the Redeemer who died for our sins and this is what evolution means, then Christianity is nothing. Incredible. Yeah. And, and he's not alone. Uh, Darwin historian Peter Bowler uh, who is hostile to biblical Christianity, yes. described it perfectly when he said this, if Christians accepted that humanity was the project, product of evolution, then assuming the process could be seen as an expression of the creator's will, then the whole idea of original sin would have mm. to be reinterpreted. Far from falling from an original state of grace in the Garden of Eden, we have risen gradually from our animal origins. And if there was no sin from which we needed salvation, what was the purpose of Christ's agony on the cross? Uh, he, he sees the incompatibility between Christianity and evolution very clearly. Uh, exactly. Obviously. Atheists need evolution, and this has been very detrimental to Christianity. And it's, it's, it's just a key thing that people really need to understand. Yeah. Many Christians yeah. think that, okay, well, evolution is just science. They've gone to a state-run school system. They've been taught it as science and fact and, and things like that. But they just don't understand the philosophical framework that's boosted that up. Right. So, and, I mean, that's what we do as a ministry. We provide the, the, the Bible first the, the, the Bible supporting information, the science and philosophy that supports creation and shows where evolution has gone off the rails. And it goes off the rails everywhere. Yep. And, and if you want to get a free creation magazine, go to creation.com slash free mag. You can look at a free issue there. And next week on Creation Magazine Live, when exactly were bad things created? Right. We'll see you next week. <laughs>